Good evening, everyone, and Ramadan Kareem, and to uh, my Arab colleagues, Siam and Maqbul. I won't take much of your time. I would like to touch on a few things and then move to the announcement that some of you may already know and some of you may uh, are going to find out now. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to congratulate everyone for the hard work on the uh, record of uh, the first half report and uh, sticking and believing in DMZC continuity and there's more to come. There are more markets that are not aware about DMZC. There are more countries that are not aware of what we provide and there's a lot more to do. We're not at the stage where we're reaching the max or filled up. We're at the stage where we've built credibility. We're at the stage where we have uh, gained confidence from most of the industry. We are at a stage where people who don't know us could ask another counterparty and get a full picture about us. So our, our almost 9,000 companies are our ambassadors and not to take any away from your hard work, it's your hard work as well that is spreading the word locally, regionally and internationally. It's no secret uh, moving forward in addition to capturing more businesses within the region, India, China, the ASEAN market, and bringing more business from Europe and Africa, um, and, and strengthening the relationship with Russia, it's no secret that I, uh, the, the only area is the Latin community. So recently, DMCC has participated with uh, government trade uh, business trips to Ecuador and Colombia, and also participated in the UAE-Mexico Forum. This will not stop. We actually might visit these places again for, 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 to visit the other companies or, and you know, the first visits are introductory, kind of similar to how DMCC started. We introduced ourselves and we listened to the market. It's the same with the South Americas and the Latin community, whether it be in Philippines, in the US, uh, Macau, but most of the focus is the heavily vested uh, emerging markets and vested commodity markets. And so you hear news about DGCX listing currency pairs from emerging markets. And if you look at the last uh, uh, currencies, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, the Indian rupee option is back, I hear, or about to be back. These are all countries that are heavily vested in commodities. So we want to complete His Highness' vision in every single way. Um, and uh, that's, that's where we are right now. I mean, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably have too much news about me, but you can always not watch and uh, follow someone else uh, or close your phone for a day. Uh, back to the announcement. The, this, this announcement and this initiative is actually a six-year-old concept. And uh, when I first brought it up, I brought it up with some seniors. I brought it up with even Malcolm, and it was, I think, Malcolm's first year. And uh, we want things to move. So we did not want anyone to think we're putting a burden uh, on them. And the seniors, uh, the board, were, had their reservations. We even, we, I even met with the a charity house about this initiative, one of them, which did not want to participate because they were ashamed that this initiative is starting from DMCC and they, they're not implementing it. I guess that's the reason. I hope that's the reason. But in any case, let's not talk about the past anymore. We just use that to attract more businesses and in and, uh, and the holy month of Ramadan, this is the best time to announce it in the staff of Pab while you're here and you'll read about it tomorrow or online today. We are, and this is Gautam's suggestion about the naming of it, the DMC, we're creating the DMCC Foundation. Um, the reason for that, it is going to be a non-dominational uh, fund to be overseen by independent trustees 
uh, nominated by myself and others. I will, I will always, my ears are always open for recommendations. You're, you're all in touch with me. Uh, and apparently, this is going to set a precedent in Dubai and the UAE for CSR and humanitarian work in line with actually international practice. When I say that is, the concept uh, that I explained to the team is that the contracts will have, just as there is a fee that goes to your pen pension, uh, there will be a percentage, not from your salary, from, from what you uh, and the management see as saving that lapsed the year of 2.5% that goes to goodwill. And the, it might look small today, but the domino effect will start from now. And other organizations cannot stand idle while DMCC uh, pulls this off ahead of them. So I expect other executive chairmen, other uh, high management uh, executives, and other organizations to follow suit. I mean, they, uh, this month, if, if someone wants to describe it, it's about the UAE Water Aid launched and promoted by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President, Prime Minister of UAE and Ruler of Dubai, which is under the UAE Red Crescent. So it is about CSR. And I thought, I'm not going to let this wait anymore any longer. We've polished it enough, and year on year it will get better. Um, do not be concerned. We're not forcing anyone to put that on their contract. But those who part, uh, buy into it, it gives us an opinion of what kind of an employee that person is and what kind of commitment that person has towards the world and the mindset. It also gives us an idea of which part of the work you, you are more productive in and the loyalty where it lies. So there's a lot of things we gain from it in addition to the goodwill. So keep that in mind before you're in haste about uh, the 2.5% of uh, monies you haven't used for a year. It's not by force. Your, it's your decision. And it's starting with my contract, and I've already, um, the ball is rolling on my contract, so that's done. Um, to give you an example, the UK is the largest charity giver. But I believe that's not going to be for long. The GCC might follow with the UAE. And uh, what it would be a wonderful thing to compete with the UK on such a noble matter. Uh, the uh, one example is, and one of the organizations in, in the UK is, there's a, a one day's pay for good cause. I actually read it one month. I don't know why, for some reason. I always, I always, I always look at things bigger. But anyways, one day, I just noticed that. I'm glad I had the papers in my hands. Otherwise, you guys would have left, I think. Uh, <laughs> the, as I said, the concept relates to the, uh, contribu my, my recent contribution to the UA Red Crescent and DMCC's two million uh, contribution to the UA uh, uh, Water uh, Aid. And uh, we're closing in to five million in record time, record uh, number. And, uh, and, and that's great news. Um, I think I've explained some parts of it. And I guess some of you might have more questions. Myself and Suzanne are there. And it's, uh, it's up to you when you're ready to uh, sign in. But uh, to clarify things that are uh, casted on stone are the, fo are the following. Your position, if you've signed in, and let's say in the future you've gone to greener grass or found a better opportunity, the next employee doesn't have a choice. It's there. It's a trend. A vacant position, it will be added to that vacant position. It's there. So I am very serious about this. And uh, uh, 
yes, it did get it did take six years because we had priorities, but I never stopped focusing on the CSR side of my life, whether it be with the corporate or personal, and you've all been witnesses to that. And I would be very grateful um, if you would sleep on it on, and support this good cause. And uh, you have my office for any questions, meetings. As you know, there is a one hour with Ahmed as well, uh, a game of chess or whatever you'd like, or discuss this matter. I'm here for you as the head of HR and the executive chairman. And uh, let me reiterate, I'm leading by example on this matter. So thank you very much and enjoy the meal.